Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this video, what we're going to be talking about is how radians and degrees are different, how they're alike, how they're used to measure rotation. In the next video, we'll talk about all the mathy stuff, like how to translate and transfer between degrees, radians, and how to fill out a unit circle in radians. But it's a pretty good idea to have an intuitive sense of what a radian is before you get into that. So let's get to it, shall we? If you talk about the Earth rotating around the sun in a takes a full year to make a complete rotation, right? But how far does the Earth rotate around the sun in just one day? Well, the Egyptians thought that it was one degree. That's how far the Earth would rotate. It's pretty close. They thought so because they thought there were 360 days in a year. Pretty good. Not too bad. Of course, it's wrong. But that's where we get our definition of uh, 360 degrees being in a full rotation or in a circle. So if you have a circle and you make a complete rotation, that means you stop where you started. You go all the way around just once. If you divide that rotation equally into 360 parts, that's what degrees are. So one degree is one 360th of a circle. So it's a very, very, very tiny rotation, one degree. Now, Let's talk about 30 degrees. We're pretty familiar with how 30 degrees looks, but I want to bring to your attention a couple things that are important for us to understand what radians are. When we have an angle that is a central angle, that means the vertex of the angle is at the center of the circle, it creates a subtended arc or an arc length along the circumference of the circle. It's between the starting point and the ending point of the circle. So here, this angle, of 30 degrees creates a, an arc length that's this long, right? And then, of course, a 90 degree angle is one we're really familiar with, and that would be kind of like making a direct left or right turn. It's something we're super familiar with. We understand what that means. So I'm hoping that when we start talking about radians, we do so in a way that you have an intuitive sense of how large a radian is, all right? So before we get into the radians, let's make sure we're 100% rock solid here. An angle is a measure of rotation. Degrees are a unit we can use, and a degree is one portion of a full rotation that's been divided equally into 360 parts. Now, let's get into the radius, into the radians, shall we? So imagine you have a circle with a radius that is, say, 10 centimeters, right? So what a radian is, is an angle that's created an arc length that is the same distance as the radius. So if I start here and I start rotating counterclockwise, when this arc length right here is the same distance as that radius, then I have one radian. See? Now, when you go all the way around the circle, what ends up, what ends up happening is that you have two pi radius is that distance. So there are two pi radians in a full circle. And it's a little tricky and a little confusing because the number of radians in a circle, it's not a whole number. So that makes it a little, little confusing. So let's take a look at why that is, how that looks, right? So here's one radian, and that again is when this arc length matches the radius, that's one radian. So if I rotate another arc length of the same, I end up with two radians, and then do it again, three radians. Three radians is almost 180 degrees, six radians is almost 360 degrees. And the reason that is, is because, well, two times pi is a little more than six. It's like 6.28. So the number of rotations of radians doesn't fit exactly in 360 degrees. After six, we still have a little more than a quarter of a radian left. And so that is very, very different than how this would work with degrees. Because after 360 degrees, all of the angles, like 390 degrees, it's the same exact thing as 30 degrees, where that, that kind of pattern does not work with radians. And the reason that is, once again, because this arc length has to be the same as the radius, and the circumference is 2 times pi times r. Pi is not an integer, so we don't have an integer number of times that radians fits in one full rotation. Now, pi comes from the circumference divided by the diameter, and the diameter is, of course, twice the radius. So let's go ahead and put this all together now, shall we? A degree. If you take a full rotation and you divide it into 360 parts, you have 360 degrees. So one degree is just one of those 360. But a radian doesn't start with dividing a full rotation into equal parts. Instead, it says if an arc length is the same as the radius, that's one radian. And so that makes it 
a little trickier to deal with. It just approaches rotations in a different way. So one degree is one of 360 degrees in a full rotation, but one radian is one out of two pi radians in a full rotation. So that's how they're similar. They both describe rotations, but they approach it in a different way. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you have an idea of what radians really are, how they work. If so, give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, share it on social media. In the next video, we are going to talk about how to translate or how to convert between radians degrees, degrees to radians, and how to fill out all the radian measurements on the unit circle from memory without having to memorize it, just from understanding one or two things. If you can count and you can reduce, boom, you'll have it.